Hello everyone, and welcome to one of the craziest games you'll ever see, and uh, surprise surprise, uh, who is uh, playing it, uh, of course, Rashid Nejmeddinov. Uh, the game was played in 1964, it was a Chigurin Memorial Tournament in Sochi, and uh, Rashid Nejmeddinov faces uh, Slovak international master Maximilian Uitelki. And uh, aside from uh, being a, a, chess, a chess international master, uh, he also competed uh, for, the, for the Czechoslovakian uh, Olympiad team uh, three times, and uh, it is said that he is a direct descendant of uh, fam famous Hungarian composer Franz Liszt. Uh, something uh, seems uh, li like an interesting uh, bit of information. Uh, so let's uh, check out this game. And I did prepare, as uh, we haven't had a photo challenge for quite a while, as I, uh, you know, pre-recorded the videos before I left for Dubrovnik. Uh, I did. Uh, I decided to give you one. So best of luck to everyone who are the two gentlemen in this photo. So there you have it. And also, uh, it's a very nice chessboard, if I do say so myself. So, uh, there you have it. Uh, enjoy. Uh, now, let's check out this uh, game that uh, should be one of the craziest games ever. In this, in this um, game, you will see a defense by Black that resembles the Hippopotamus defense. And also something uh, called the Witelki system. Uh, as uh, he, he, he played this quite a lot with the Black pieces and was known uh, to be the hero of the Hippo. Uh, as he employed it in in uh, very strong encounters, so e4, g6, we have d4, uh, bishop to g7, so black uh, still you know uh, can transpose into anything, uh, knight to c3, d6, bishop to c4, uh, we have e6, uh, knight to f3, knight to e7, uh, and now Rashid goes for the immediate h4. As black is still uh, you know deciding what to play, uh, but this is something that uh, is quite common for for black when he goes for this hippopotamus uh, defense, uh, placing the knight to d7 and also to e7. And here, uh, as uh, you know, there is a nice target on g6. Rashid immediately goes for h4. Black is still. Uh, kind of, you know, keeping everything open, uh, and this is something you will see very often if Black continues uh, with the early, uh, goes with the early G6, uh, or if uh, a player with the white pieces is 11 Aronian. So we have H6, and now Bishop to F4. Now uh, pushing H5 doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, as this will be met with G5. So after H6, Bishop to F4, and now A6. Uh, Queen E2, uh, we have Knight to D7, uh, and now A4. Uh, preventing b5. Uh, we have b6, rook to d1, and now bishop to b7. Uh, king to f1. Uh, we have knight to f8, remaneuvering, and now king back to g1. Uh, queen to c8, and uh, here comes bishop to b3. Queen d7, uh, we have rook to h3, and rook to d8 now. So if you look at this position, it's quite an unorthodox position. Uh, the white king is on g1, the rook is on h3, uh, but uh, Rashid pushed uh, the h4 pawn as well as the a4 pawn. And as you can see, uh, black, it's, uh, you know, black can really do anything. His, his king is still stuck on e8, but it's not all that easy to take advantage of this. The knights uh, and the bishop are doing an excellent job defending, and this bishop is w uh, very well placed on b7. So, bishop back to c4, attacking the a6 pawn as the queen moved from c8, so queen back to c8. Uh, bishop back to b3, and now f6. Uh, uh, we tell he doesn't repeat queen d7. Uh, rook to e1, uh, and now comes king to f7, uh, trying also to artificially castle, but also to support the pawns. Uh, bishop back to c1, and now c6. Uh, there were a lot of moves possible in this position, but uh, I mean... Could you really resist playing c6 in this position and creating this uh, very nice uh, structure? Uh, knight to d2, we have d5 now, and uh, a5. Uh, we have b5, and now knight to f3. Uh, queen to c7, uh, bishop to d2, we have bishop to c8, and now knight back to a2. Uh, knight to h7, knight to b4 now, uh, and uh, h8 rook comes to e8. Knight to d3. Uh, we have knight to f8, and now bishop to f4, attacking the queen. A very nice idea by Nezhmedinov, as uh, uh, he kind of he forces black to capture this pawn, but it's a very nice idea. Uh, queen captures on a5 was played, and now comes e5. Uh, uh, Utelki locks down the position with f5, and now comes the bishop back to d2, attacking the queen. Queen moves and now comes rook to a1. Here Nezhmedinov uh, is preparing bishop to a5 to win the to win the exchange as the rook is still on d8. Uh, and uh, he did create something out of the position. But uh, 
trying to prevent this with something like queen b8 uh, so, so the rook can move uh, will be met actually with h5 and now the queen is simply too far away to, to do anything. Uh, g5 now comes knight captures, pawn captures and bishop captures. Uh, h6 is coming so you do have to move the bishop either way. Uh, white will push h6 and after knight to h7 now comes queen h5 check. This was the whole point. Uh, king moves and now uh, bishop captures. King captures and queen to g6 attacking the knight. Uh, knight has to move and you don't really have a lot of options here. Uh, knight moves, pawn captures, bishop captures and now h7 and white will break through here. So uh, quite, uh, you know, definitely a critical position. And here uh, Maximilian with Elki makes a very interesting decision. He plays a knight to h7, immediately starts defending against this threat uh, and allows a bishop to a5. Here we do have bishop to a5, queen moves and now bishop captures on d8. So uh, a very interesting, uh, you know, turn of events uh, that it's actually Nezhmedinov who is up the exchange. Uh, rook captures and now queen to d2. Uh, so what's what's the idea here? Queen to d2, of course, uh, you might uh, want to start pushing the h pawn and then after g5 sa sacrifice the knight via knight to g5. Not immediately, but perhaps after the knight moves from h7, but also queen a5 to uh, attacking the rook on d8 will also be an idea. Uh, bishop to b7, queen does come to a5 now, and now rook to a8, uh, protecting the a6 pawn. Uh, knight to c5, and now comes bishop to c8, getting out of knight's reach. Uh, c3, and now knight to f8. So although Nezhmedinov is up the exchange, it's not all that easy to, to break through here. Uh, here he plays knight to e1. Uh, knight to e1, uh, I have no idea if uh, if Nezhmedinov uh, blundered a pawn here, but, uh, or maybe he did this on purpose to, to try and break through the position. Uh, you can, uh, it's very hard to tell, but he allowed bishop captures on e5. Uh, of course, now if pawn captures, queen will be able to capture on c5. Uh, but he did go for this. d captures on e5, queen captures on c5, and now knight to d3, attacking the queen. So, uh, it's still hard to say, did he go for this or did he blunder a pawn? Uh, queen back to a7, and now bishop back to c2. Uh, we have c5 now, and here b4. Uh, knight to c6, attacking the queen, queen to a3, and now c4. Uh, knight comes to c5, and now knight captures on e5, so grabbing an yet another pawn. Uh, queen to c1, now threatening to go to h6, uh, grabbing this pawn, and now h5. Uh, rook to g3. Uh, queen to h6 immediately doesn't uh, really give white all that much. Uh, so we have rook to g3 and now knight e to d7, uh, offering a trade. Uh, knight captures on e6. Here, uh, knight captures on d7 was the correct uh, <laughs> the correct way to go, and queen captures on d7. And now uh, Rashid is still up the exchange, and uh, you know you, you're gonna play this position. Uh, but here, after knight e7, Rashid decided to play knight captures on e6. He he refuses to be up material. Uh, we have knight captures on e6, and now comes queen to h6, threatening queen captures on g6. Uh, here, knight d to f8 was played. It's a very precise idea and the only correct idea. If you try and uh, defend with this, then Nezhmedinov's idea was bishop captures on f5. Pawn captures and rook to e1, uh, completely cutting off the king here, and next move, queen g7 would be checkmate. So after queen h6, knight d to f8. Uh, protecting the g6 pawn, and now comes bishop captures on f5, nevertheless. Uh, g captures on f5, and now rook to e1, uh, Nezhmedinov proceeds with his plan. Uh, bishop to d7, and now comes queen captures on h5. King to e7, and now queen captures on f5. So, uh, Uitelki is uh, is up material, and he, he has a better position, uh, but Ras Rashid is making it very hard for him to prove it. Uh, king d6, uh, tucking the king away to safety, h5 now, uh, Rashid doesn't have much, but he does have a pass pawn, and pass pawns must be pushed. Uh, a5, uh, queen to e5, this comes with check, king c6, and the rook to d1 now, threatening queen captures on d5. So, knight to c7, simply defending the pawn. Uh, rook to a1 now not allowing a captures on b4. And although you could uh, push a4 here, uh, instead a queen to b8 is played. Uh, we have pawn captures on a5, and now b4. c captures on b4, and now queen captures on b4. Uh, rook to f3, uh, and here knight to e6. Uh, we have a6, 
Uh, of course, you cannot capture the pawn immediately as rook captures on f8 would follow. Uh, but uh, knight to c6 now defending the f8 uh, rook, uh, the, the f8 knight, and now uh, you can actually capture the pawn on a5. So a6. Uh, we have queen to c5, uh, and here comes queen to e1. Uh, queen to e1, a very nice move. Uh, you know, keeping everything in order and preparing rook to a5, a very nice rook lift that will kick away the black queen, and also perhaps start a very nice attack. Uh, knight to d4, attacking the rook on f3, and here comes rook to f6 check. Uh, knight f to e6 blocking, and here comes rook to a5 attacking the queen. Queen to b6, uh, uh, the best idea, and now comes h6. Nezhmedinov pushes the other pass pawn as well. Uh, king to d6. Uh, it was it, it's a nice idea, but queen to b2 uh, would have been would have been better with the idea of uh, this check followed by queen cap uh, queen captures uh, rook uh, on f6. So this would have def definitely be a, a better active move, but okay, king d6, and here we have h7 by Nezhmedinov. Uh, c3, now uh, Witelki starts pushing his own pass pawn as well, uh, and here we have rook back to a1. Uh, queen captures on c3, if you do this, uh, then you get knight to e2 check, of course you lose the queen, so that's not really something you want to do. Uh, after c3, uh, rook to a1, and uh, here we have c2, Witelki found a way to push his own pass pawn as well. Uh, rook to g6. The idea, of course, being uh, rook, to, rook to g7 or rook to g8, uh, either forcing an exchange but also threatening h8 queen. So rook to h8, preventing it, and now comes a7. Nezhmedinov pushes yet another pass pawn, uh, and here comes queen to b2. Uh, here we have uh, rook to h6. Rook to h6 is a, a very dangerous move, but uh, there's really not all that much to do here. Uh, if you try something like a8 and bring the queen into the game, you simply get rook captures, and after rook captures, uh, c1 with another queen, and uh, now the game is over for white. Uh, another thing uh, after this queen to b2 move, you could try something like uh, rook to g8. Uh, but even this doesn't help you. It seems like a valid idea. Simply block the rook and then bring a queen into the game. Uh, but this actually loses the knight e2 check. It's uh, that, yes, uh, that simple. After queen captures, now queen captures rook and it's all over. Uh, and even if you don't capture it, even if you try something like king to h1, uh, then you get rook captures on h7 and this is now checkmate. Uh, and on the other hand, if you go to f1, then again you get rook captures on h7, and it doesn't matter if you bring another queen into the game, you're getting rook h1 check, king captures, and now simply a double check from the uh, queen and the, the knight you've just promoted from a pawn. Uh, king has to move, queen d4 check, king moves, queen f4, this will be checkmate. So, uh, not uh, definitely not gonna go with rook to g8. Uh, so what can you do here? Here Nezhmedinov tried rook to h6, simply defending the h7 pawn and, you know, keeping uh, all of his options open. Uh, but this was actually a terrible blunder, but fortunately for him, uh, Maximilian Wittelki did not figure it out. He played knight to e2 and he thought that uh, uh, this was just as crushing, but it's not. Uh, knight to f3 wins the game immediately on the spot. Uh, now if you capture the knight, then you get queen g7 check king moves and now comes the bishop to b5 check or you go to the h file and then queen captures rook uh, king f1 now bishop checks and you don't really have any options here queen e2 and you don't even have to capture the queen first first queen captures on a1 with check king moves uh, queen jet back to g7 check king moves and only now queen to c1 and this will be checkmate so definitely a very nice move uh we tell king missed so instead of this uh, knight to f3, very crushing move, he played knight to e2 check. He thought it was all the same, uh, but it's not. We have king to h2, and now comes c1 queen. Uh, rook captures, knight captures, and here queen to a5, uh, threatening to bring another queen into the game. Uh, Witelki defends this, bishop to c6, and now comes queen to a6. Uh, black is still better, but, uh, you know, if you, if he, he could have finished the game with knight to f3 check immediately. Uh, queen to e5 check. Uh, g3, and now comes knight to b3. Uh, we have f4. Uh, Nezhmetino is really, really going all out this game. Uh, this is this is really some kung fu chess. Uh, queen b2 check. Uh, we have king to h3, and in this position, uh, Maximilian Witelki played knight to c5, and uh, after Rashid brought another queen into the game, uh, he decided to resign the game. So it seems like a extremely complicated position with uh, a whole lot of uh, 
variations available, but uh, the truth is it's not really. Uh, here, uh, after knight captures queen on a6 and uh, queen captures knight on a6, there, there's really not all that much for white to do. Uh, after queen to c1, for example, uh, you're, a threat, you're guarding against rook captures uh, knight, followed by queen captures bishop. Uh, also, uh, you're not allowing white to give any checks, you're guarding the a3 square, and most importantly, you're not allowing f5 to attack the pinned piece, as if you move the pawn, then queen captures rook is coming, of course. Uh, so, here, uh, after this uh, queen was brought into the game, Rashid Nejmedino resigned the game. Uh, after a couple of moves, for example, here, you could try something like queen to a2, uh, as uh, queen to h1 is a big threat to pick up the rook on h8, and after queen here, queen here, you can capture, and after king captures, now simply d, d, d4 would win the game. And I will, I will show this variation uh, until the end, as it's very interesting. You can even <laughs> give up a knight here, uh, and after d3, rook captures king d5, uh, you have to block uh, the pawn, and after d2, rook d1, uh, now you play king d4, and this is crushing. You even give up the pawn. Rook captures, now you play king e3, and now it's a <laughs> very nice uh, uh, ending. Rook has to move, rook captures, king g1, and now rook to h1, checkmate, as now the king is covering f2. So, very nice idea, pushing the pawn, simply to get the e3 with tempo and checkmate the white king. So uh, a very nice, uh, a very nice game by by both of them. You know, creating such an insane game in 86 move, moves with uh, who knows how many queens on the board. And uh, in the end, Maximilian Witelki, Slovak uh, international master, uh, managed to defeat Rashid Nezhmedinov. But yeah, definitely one of the craziest games I've ever seen. You know, definitely you know similar to to a lot of Tal's games uh, especially the one he played against goblins uh, that's uh, a really insane game as well uh, if you haven't seen it i will put a link to it in the description below if you like games like this so yeah uh, that's the game i do hope you enjoyed it uh, as usual you can check to all my previous uh, videos here thank you all for watching and uh, i will see you uh, soon as i'm uh, almost back from dubrovnik thank you all